Hi guys, we're back. I promised you a video about the guitars I use for my busking adventures and my one-man band acoustic project. So here they are. I'm using four guitars at the moment. A Yamaha LL6, a Fender California Vintage uh, Palomino, the Epiphone Master Built Texan, and an Epiphone inspired by Gibson J200. Let's have a listen at the four guitars. So why am I using four guitars? Well, first of all, they all sound different and have a different tonal quality, a dynamic range and absolutely a different volume. So I'm trying to pick the guitar that will best suit the needs. I mean, if it's like a small concert and people are actually coming to sort of a gig, then I will take a guitar that has more of a vintage sound. It may not be as loud or produce as much volume, but it will have a very distinctive sound. That sound of the guitar actually brings out another voice. So when I'm singing with those kind of sounds, I feel like I'm not alone. It's the voice of the guitar and it's my voice. If I have to play outside on the street, I take a loud guitar that just supports the voice and I'm not really looking for a guitar that has a distinctive sound of its own because it will get lost anyway and usually those guitars produce less volume which doesn't really help me when I have to sing on a busy street. So that's why I picked the guitar that is best suited for what I'm going to do. The second reason is that I'm not a one man one guitar kind of guy. I've got quite a few guitars especially electric guitars and also for this one-man band project, I like to switch guitars every now and again. It inspires me to take a guitar that I didn't use the day before, because then when I'm driving to the, the city I'm going to play in, or the venue, or the event that I'm going to play at, I'm sort of excited about, oh yeah, today I'm going to play that J200. It needs a different approach. The guitar is totally different. It feels different. It sounds different. And I can get excited about that and that helps me keep motivated because sometimes I play eight hours in one go. So I play two hours, move to the next spot two hours, next spot two hours and two more hours. That's what I do when I go to uh, like a city and I take a full day for busking. I will play four sets and each set is now two hours. It used to be shorter but now I'm just staying there for two hours. So it's a long day, it's eight hours fully concentrated playing music. I need my energy. There is not, in those two hours, there's not a moment that you can sort of drift away and think about something else because then you will lose what you need to do. You are there focused on your guitar playing, on your singing, on the chords that you have to come up with, on the lyrics, and you have to keep an eye on the people to see like, is this type of music working today, depending on the crowd, the place you are. You might have to adapt, so I'm already thinking about the next song that I'm going to pull up. So it's a fully concentrated two hours, and that four times in a row, which is eight hours, like a full day work, 
but then without any moment that you are not focused. So yeah, that's why I need my energy and that's why I find it interesting to bring a different guitar every day. And that is not always the easiest solution because there are very easy guitars to play like the Yamaha and I could do that day after day and it, it will do its job. Some guitars are a bit more involving like the Texan, it's a bit more energy uh, to play that guitar correctly. But that trade-off I don't mind. As I said, when you switch guitars, there's a lot of things that change. The most obvious thing to think about is that in the 3D space, with every new guitar or with every different guitar, the strings are in a different place. Depending on the size of the body, the strings will come up or go down, go left and right, or go further away from your body. So this position in the 3D space is always different with every guitar. On top of that, the string spacing uh, is different on every guitar. The scale length might be different. After a couple of minutes of playing, you sort of feel where everything is. But if you're out on the street, you unpack your guitar and you start playing, sometimes it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> this is where the strings are. And your body needs to adapt uh, to that. While I was filming the videos with these different guitars, I noticed that. I didn't take time to adjust to every guitar and every now and again there's a bum note or there's a, a slide that I just barely reach because of the fact that the strings are somewhere else than they were like just a minute ago on that different guitar. I've also noticed that the thickness of the neck makes a massive difference in the ease of playing. I've noticed that with a thin neck it's sometimes more difficult to play bar chords depending on the tension of the strings and the height of the frets. So that's a difference as well. So for these clips I use an AKG 451B, like a pen mic. And that went straight into Studio One. I didn't use any compression, reverb, delay, nothing. It's just the clean signal. And I did notice afterwards that because of the fact that I positioned the microphone just there, sort of the, where the body meets the neck of the guitar and then like uh, one foot away from the guitar. I noticed that there's a bit more high end frequency in the total sound that is not less, that is less obvious when you're in the room. So you might have to think like a bit less high frequency and there's a bit of bass missing that the mic didn't pick up. So if you listen to the guitars, bear in mind that there is actually a little more bass and a little less high frequency in the sound in the room. So I think they sound better in real life than they do on the recording.
So as you could hear, they all sound very different. Let's talk about the four guitars. The first one is my Yamaha LL6. This is a fantastic loud dreadnought. I bought this guitar especially for busking. I went to a music store in Cologne, in Germany, and I tried, I think, maybe 12 or 15 different guitars in the same price range. I didn't want to spend more than 600 euros on any of the guitars, so I had to hassle every now and again to get the guitar into that uh, price, price range. I wanted an all solid wood guitar, so top, back and sides, and sound pleasant and play easily. And this is what this guitar does. It's a loud guitar, it plays quite easy, and it's got a nice sound. Now Yamaha doesn't have the same reputation as one of the American brands like Martin, Taylor, uh, Gibson. So that's why they're usually quite a bit cheaper than they actually should be. This guitar is built perfectly. It's got Engelmann spruce top, rosewood back and sides. The back is really beautiful. Sides, very well done. Perfect setup. The tuners are the smoothest ones on all the guitars. Really, really good. The guitar is really reliable. I've used it on more than, let me check, 143 busking sessions. So that's 143 times six to eight hours. I've never broken a string. This is the third set of strings that I'm using, Elixirs. And they still sound. Quite fresh. Elixir 12s. The only negative about this guitar is it doesn't have a voice of its own like a Martin or a Gibson and even a Taylor. It's a very high fi nice, clean, full range sound. And maybe, maybe now I would recognize it as a Yamaha. But on its own, it doesn't feel like it's a vintage kind of sound. It's a very usable. But it's, to me, it sounds like an orchestra that just supports your voice. And that's perfect when you're on the street. But for smaller gigs, I do prefer one of the other guitars that has a more distinct sound of its own and a more vintage, slightly boxier, recognizable sound. Still, this is my main busking guitar and I trust it 100%. It never let me down all those gigs. The second guitar is this Fender California Vintage uh, Palomino. I received this guitar yesterday and it really surprised me. It sounds, I mean, if there would be a sliding scale between vintage and modern, this guitar is right in the middle. It's got a bit of that vintagey low mid. But it also has that high fee quality in the higher frequencies. All solid woods again, Sitka spruce top, Ovanco back and sides. And if you've seen my unboxing video, you will have seen my reaction when I got this out of the box. It's Beautiful, beautiful guitar, and it weighs nothing. It's a really, really lightweight, comfortable guitar. The thing is, and I've mentioned that in the unboxing video as well, this neck is to me like the neck of an electric guitar, which means 
it's quite thin. It's got a sort of soft V shape. The frets are really low, which means it's really sensitive to the amount of pressure that you use. The moment you release the pressure just a little bit, the note disappears. Which means you have to be much more precise with your pressure on the strings or you have to really dig in hard, which I don't do. And since I play so lightly, the sometimes notes just don't appear, like this. So I have to press a bit harder. That's because of the fact that the frets are really low. The action is good. I didn't change anything, I didn't change the, the height of the bridge. I think the action is about two and a half millimeters, just maybe a tad too much, but it seems to work on this guitar. Since the neck is quite thin, you have to be really careful with your bar chords, because a thin neck, you have to squeeze your fingers differently. A, th a fat neck is easy, because then you just do that, and then your finger can be straight, no problem. But if, if your neck gets thinner, you have to be able to stretch your fingers, your first finger, better in order to have it straight. So an, a bar E minus 7 chord, I have to pay a bit more attention because of the fact that the neck is thinner. Really has to. It's like holding a paper between your thumb and your first finger. Yeah, this is the only guitar with six in line headstock. I don't mind, it looks a different than any other acoustic guitar. These guitars were released, I think, a year ago, maybe six months ago, and they sort of went under the radar. I've seen Alamo Music make a video about it, and I think Andertons did one, and that's just about anything I could find that offered some information. On the Fender website, you can find the whole list of technical details that you need, and also a video uh, where the guys are explaining the whole concept of these reissue California vintage uh, guitars. So I was really surprised with this one. I've not used it outside. This is like brand new and I thought I wouldn't like it. But since Andertons gave me a really smoking deal, I thought, well, let's give it a try. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a keeper. The Yamaha came in a very nice, sturdy, soft case. This one comes in a vintage style hard case. The third guitar is this Epiphone Master Build Texan. Now, the Master Builds and the Inspired by Gibson acoustic guitar range is absolutely stunning. As far as I understand, they have a few custom shops I think in China and in Indonesia, where these really good luthiers built those master builds and inspired by. The difference between inspired by and master build is quite straightforward. A master build guitar is a model that was never a Gibson. It was always an Epiphone. The inspired by Gibson range are replicas of Gibson guitars under the name of Epiphone. This is a Texan, which is actually a Gibson J45 with a longer scale length. There will be a difference in sound, in volume, but sustain. But I'm not sure. I've, I've tried a few J45s. I've tried the Epiphone Slash J45, fantastic guitar. And it sounded really different, but I, I wouldn't be able to tell like, is it because of the strings, is it because it's just a different guitar, and every guitar, especially acoustic guitars, sound different, I wouldn't know. They all sound really beautiful. There you go, I like this one. Now this is the most vintage sounding guitar of the lot. This cream, I'm not sure if you can hear it through this microphone, but this creamy low end, so this slightly buttery, sticky sound. With a, like a short, spiky attack. That 
that's what, to me, defines the Gibson sound. You can hear sometimes the bass is unnoticeable. If you do. It's not like those notes pop out like on the Yamaha. See what I mean? Totally different, but I really love this sound. And this is the perfect guitar for small gigs where there's not too many people and they're listening. This is where the guitar gives you that extra vocal quality. I really love that. I told you I tried a few Gibsons. I was in Music Store in Colonia again yesterday and I've tried Gibson J45 and a J200 and I put them aside the Epiphone inspired by Gibson or the uh, master build. What I noticed is that the, the Gibson fretboards are a bit wider which, which I prefer do sound different. The Gibsons all sounded better, no doubt, but not 10 times better. Maybe just, I think these guitars are 85% there, sound-wise. And with the right strings, who, who would tell? Who could tell? Yeah, if you A-B them next to each other, then of course, but without the Gibson next to it to compare it with, I don't think anybody would recognize that this is an Epiphone and not a Gibson. The other thing is, all the Epiphones were set up much better than the Gibsons. The action on all the Gibsons was way too high. And I understand that they leave the action high so that you can adjust it to what you want. But the reason, the biggest reason why the action on most guitars is high is because they don't want the guitars to buzz when you try them in the shop. You don't want... You don't want... If the action is lower and the neck moves just a little bit because it came from the States and went to Europe, I mean, you can sort of imagine all the different places that those guitars have been before they end up in the store. The neck may have moved and if the stores don't adjust or uh, the neck or, or do a setup on the guitar, they might buzz. So that's why they leave the action quite high, so that they won't buzz. The Epiphones, all of them, had a perfect setup. Now this guitar is in standard tuning, so for the recordings you've heard, you will notice that this guitar is half a tone up compared to the other guitars. That's because I was doing some recording in the studio and I left it in standard tuning. Do I prefer a Gibson J45? Yes, of course. And if I would only be playing in small clubs in a very controlled environment where I could keep an eye on my guitar and I would be inside and there wouldn't be that much climate changes all the time, I would definitely get a J45 and be done with. You never know what's going to happen. That's why my limit for buying guitars was 600 euros. This one as well, this one came up at Bax in Holland for a stupid price. The major reason why stores that don't have a specific guitar in stock offer you a much better price than the competitor is that they want to prevent you buying from the competitor. Yeah, this guitar was really cheap. They didn't have it in stock. And <laughs> the moment I bought it, I thought like, okay, I don't mind waiting seven weeks. I'll just take the deal. The moment I bought it, all of a sudden, it was in stock. So the next day I received this guitar for, again, a smoking deal. And I really love it. Yeah, solid Sitka spruce top. Mahogany back and sides. Mahogany neck. This one is made in Indonesia. They put this sort of, I think it's poly finish but it's sort of half matte, so it looks quite vintage It's not a nitro finish. It looks and feels 
like it should. The Gibsons were far stickier. Tuners are okay, so no. Do sound smooth now. But yeah, they're sometimes sticky. I might, I might need to oil them. That might be the reason. But they do the job. But they're not as smooth as the ones on the hammer. All right. So yeah, this one sort of feels like if Tom Waits was a guitar, this would be Tom Waits. And finally, the biggest surprise to me was this J200. This is an Epiphone inspired by Gibson. So this is actually a Gibson model that they've uh, replicated under the Epiphone brand in one of their custom shops. And this guitar. When I was a teenager and I imagined an acoustic guitar sound, this was it. Here, if you do the same thing, you can hear that bass go down. Wow, this, this guitar is. This is a machine, this is. <laughs> So this is, this was a really surprise because every review I've seen, they tell you that the guitar is not as loud as they would imagine it to be. But this one is loud and vintage. So this is actually as loud as the Yamaha and as vintage sounding as the Texan. So this is the combination of two worlds, which is exactly what I would want. I never thought there would be a guitar that can combine those two worlds, but this one does it. So yeah, I was in the store, music store again in Colonia, and I was trying guitars, and this one, this is the showroom model, this is the demo guitar, sounded better than all the other ones. Uh, I, had, I had to bring uh, two guitars from the warehouse and this one even with the strings that were totally dead because this guitar had been played by hundreds of people this guitar sounded better than the other ones so I talked to the to the sales guy and I said I want that guitar specifically and I want a discount because it's a showroom model <laughs> and we uh, yeah we negotiated the deal and I got it just above 600 so I must admit that this one was 635 so that was above my limit but since the Texan was quite a bit below that limit that sort of made made up for the 30 35 I think it was 635 that I paid for this one which is just absolutely smoking deal for this guitar I didn't check it for dings or scratches because I thought I if there are scratches or dings on the guitar, I just have to live with it because it sounds so good. So I came home, gave it a decent clean, put new strings on it. These are Elixir 12s. And the guitar was in perfect condition. There's nothing, nothing anywhere. No dings, no scratches. Even the pick scratches on the uh, scratch plate. Uh, so most of them... <laughs> are done by me when I came home because I, I couldn't stop playing this guitar. Okay, Sitka Spruce again. But the back and sides are maple. So wood-wise, all my guitars are different. The neck is maple as well. Rosewood fingerboard, 
beautiful inlays. Really, really, really good tuners again. They're on a par with the ones from Yamaha. What can I say? <laughs> Some people think this bridge looks silly, but that's just the way a, G a J200 looks. This guitar was built in China, so a different custom shop. Also a Fishman yes, Sonicor Piezo, which I haven't tried because probably won't use that much. A really, really good neck. The neck feels a lot like the one on the Yamaha, shape-wise, thickness, the width. So very comfortable because I'm used to that Yamaha neck now. Like the other Epiphone, this one doesn't come with a case, which is a shame because these jumbo cases are quite expensive and that's not a cost that you have to add to the guitar if you want to use it anywhere outside your house. So, yeah. Ah, man, love it. Do I have a favorite? The Yamaha is my go-to busking guitar. It's sturdy, reliable, never let me down, never broke a string on that one. So whatever the situation outside is, if I take that guitar, I know I'm good. The Texan sounds so beautiful, it can make you cry. So it doesn't have the volume that a busking guitar needs, I think. I've, I've used it quite a few times and it works, but if the street is really busy and there's a lot of noise. I mean, so there's always like some construction work left or right that you have to uh, fight with. That Texan doesn't really have the volume to offer you the support that you need when you have to sit on top of it. But yeah, it can break hearts with its sound. So for smaller gigs, that's what I would take. Then the J200 is like a full symphonic orchestra. It's very inspiring and forgiven to play. It helps me create or be creative with what I play. That's a hard one to leave at home when I have a gig. It really is. And then the Fender Palomino is quite new. It's growing on me. In the beginning I thought like, because it was so light, it felt like this is weird. But when you touch a string, bang, it shoots out volume and sound. And as I said, it's just in the middle between a modern sound and a vintage sound. I didn't expect that. So it keeps surprising me. I'm really looking forward to using it on the street and on gigs, and I think it will offer something unique. I have to get used to the thinner neck. Everything seems a bit more close together, so to accidentally hit another string and mute that string is quite easy. So I have to be more precise with my fingering uh, in my left hand, which when you're busking is not something that you can spend too much time focusing on. So that needs to be in your system. It has to be an automatic approach. And then I think it will be a really good guitar for what I do. That was it guys. Uh, it's been a long video. If you like what you've seen, maybe consider subscribing. I would like to get to 1,000 subscribers. I've never aimed for that uh, number, but I would like to see what happens when I got 1,000 subscribers. It's quite interesting to be on that uh, journey. I've got a few more clips where I dig in a bit deeper in the strings, so I play a bit harder, because that's what you do when you're busking. Remember, uh, when you're busking, you're not a guitarist. You are a singer who is using a guitar to support his singing, but you're not a guitar player. People don't listen for your guitar playing, they, they, they listen for the songs you sing, your voice. I sometimes feel like I'm not doing these guitars justice by using them the way I use them. I mean, these are all instruments crafted with an idea of the tones that they can deliver. The, the, the delicacies with which you can play them with, all those little nuances. And I'm just there, banging on the strings, uh, singing on top of all that. And I do sometimes feel a bit guilty, like, man, that's not what this guitar was actually 
made for. And I sometimes feel like I'm a Cro-Magnon <laughs> using a stick. Thank you.